organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV. If there's information that the public wants from within the university, that we do our very best to make sure that it gets out there. Meeting with Mason, University of Iowa President Sally Mason set out some clear goals to improve the university's relationship with the state constituents. Animated Safety, how a UI animation class intends to make Iowa City safer for you as you walk around town. And in sports, we've got the weekend calendar for the Hawkeye athletics that you love on this Valentine's Day Thursday. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowan TV starts now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Happy Valentine's Day, and thanks for tuning in to Thursday's edition of Daily Iowa TV. I'm Kelsey Clemmie. And I'm Allie Wright. Freezing tuition, employee audits, and transparency are just a few of the projects President Sally Mason has on her plate. Daily Iowa TV sat down with the university president Thursday afternoon and discussed her exact goals. Mason said she would like to extend the current tuition freeze with the state legislature's help. And we are prepared to um, help shape use of those funds in any way that we can that would be helpful to the region's institutions. So at least the 2.6 percent on the base, that was certainly what we needed to be able to freeze tuition. And employee audits need to improve, Mason says, after the controversy involving former UI employee Peter Gray. Gray resigned last semester amid allegations of sexual harassment. The two things to come from that particular audit that we're going to work on very closely and very carefully is to make sure and follow up on um, personnel evaluations so that evaluations are done in a timely way and, and evaluations are included in personnel files. And secondly, to work um, harder on our, you know, we have mandatory uh, training in sexual harassment and we need to get the numbers there up. Mason said she hopes improving training and audits will help transparency improve between the university and state residents. Uh, we're going to be a little more focused in our outreach. I want to make sure that we reach parts of the state that perhaps we haven't reached before. Um, I want to make sure that, the, that our messages are consistent. I want to make sure that uh, you know, if there's information that the public wants from within the university that we do our very best to make sure that it gets out there. And you can read more about these topics in Friday's edition of the Daily Iowan. Video animation is bringing art and science together at the UI. The Art Department's Animation 2 class is working this semester with the help of the Computer Science Department. Using virtual technology to research how pedestrians and bikers navigate intersections, the class is working to make local streets safer. We're creating buildings and roadways and stop signs and everything you would see in the real world and making it look as realistic as possible. Five students are currently enrolled in the class and they are all working towards the same goal. The project is for uh, the virtual environments lab. So by creating a world that simulates Iowa City, the participants who are involved will get a better sense of how they're going to navigate in that space. The course's instructor says he plans to offer even more animation classes in the future. He also says that he hopes to see a more extensive animation program in the years to come. The UI spent more than $2,000 on athletics department travel using funds meant for student athletes. The Iowa City Press Citizen reports that UI officials blamed an accounting error and have returned the money to the Student Athlete Fund. Officials used the money to send personnel to wrestling and track meets. The NCAA allows and supports funds by universities for student athletes to help with certain costs. The University of Iowa had nearly half a million dollars allocated to these student athlete funds. An Iowa City woman was arrested after officials found one of her children playing with a rock of crack cocaine. 25-year-old Tiffany Johnson admitted to officers Wednesday evening she sold crack cocaine. Johnson said she had some of her drugs in her bedroom after police were called to her apartment for unrelated reasons. Officers came to the house after one of her three children called 911. 
Still to come on Daily Iowan TV, what would you do if your valentine was halfway across the country? One UI student tells us how she makes Valentine's special, even though her boyfriend is across the country. And in sports, a Valentine's Day breakup in the Iowa football program. Our sports staff explains coming up. But first, we're throwing it over to our own Nick Safransky for a look at our local weather. Nick? Thanks, Allie. Well, we've had a nice last couple of days here, though tomorrow looks like there's going to be a little slight dip in the temperature. Tomorrow morning, we will have a chance of snow with a high of 25 degrees. During the mid-afternoon, we'll see temperatures getting up to the 30s, and by night, we'll be back down to the lower 20s. All right, let's take a look at the forecast for the rest of the week. Over the weekend and into next week, we'll have some milder temperatures and not a lot of chance for snow or rain. Saturday, we'll hit a high of 27 and a low of 18. Sunday, we'll see another jump as temperatures reach 46 degrees, and it looks like we'll have much of the same on Monday as well. Tuesday will hit a high of 25 degrees, and Wednesday we will see a high of 34. Well, that's all I got for you guys. Back to Kelsey and Allie. Valentine's Day is a day meant to show someone you care. But what if that person is across the country? Daily Iowa TV reporter Logan Edwards takes a look at how people are bridging that distance and making the holiday special. Love is in the air today. However, for those who love someone miles away, today can be bittersweet. But it doesn't have to be. I met with Kaylee Danger earlier this week to talk about how her and her boyfriend make it work, even though they only see each other once a year. Uh, my name is Ryan. I am Kaylee's boyfriend. I'm stationed in uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I'm a medic down here in the Army. It's kind of hard, but then I remember like how much fun we have together, and it makes it all worth it. And though they agree that distance can sometimes be tough, we're pretty lucky. <laughs> Yeah. No, I sent her flowers on Saturday because uh, that's like the only time that I could get them to her. Um, it was awesome. <laughs> his mom actually brought them to me. Like his family's awesome. But they aren't the only ones spreading the love elsewhere. A local flower store said they had an order of ten thousand roses come in earlier this week to prepare for their busiest season. A good portion of those orders placed are to those who have a loved one who can't be here on the special day. Actually, this season we've had a lot of um, military um, families come in and place orders for the um, girlfriends that are left here while they're overseas. And University of Iowa's Fraternity and Sorority Life made over 400 Valentine's cards on Monday night to send to both troops and nursing homes. So, as you can see, distance really does make the heart grow fonder. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you too. Logan Edwards, Daily Iowan TV. Thanks for that touching story, Logan. Now it's time to take a look at what's going on outside of Iowa City. Passengers of a disabled cruise ship are on their way home tonight after crews repaired a broken tow line. After a fire last week which knocked out the power in the ship, the crew caught another bad break. The tow line broke while the ship was being towed to a port in Alabama. Passengers will get a full refund and discounts on future cruises. They will also each get $500 in compensation. And President Obama announced, announced a plan to expand government funding for preschool, but the president didn't say how much it would cost. While speaking to about 600 teachers and parents in Georgia, the, parent, the president said, quote, the size of your paycheck should not determine your child's future, end quote. White House officials say the new pre-kindergarten pre plans would be set up by the states rather than the federal government. And now we're going to throw it over to Daily Iowa TV Sports' Lauren Moss. And Lauren, this has been a week all about the Olympics. First, the elimination of the wrestling from the 2020 Olympics, and now a famed Olympian linked with a crazy killing in South Africa. What can you tell us about all of that? Yeah, Allie, very strange and really just a sad story as we welcome you back to the Daily Iowan Sports Studio. We start today's program with the shocking news heard around the world early this morning. Paralympian and South African national hero Oscar Pistorius has been taken into custody and charged with the murder of his girlfriend, who police confirmed was shot four times in the couple's home in the pre-dawn hours of Thursday morning. Pistorius, who inspired and captured an international attention after attempting to become the first double amputee to compete in the Olympics, has not been reached for comment. Obviously, there's no easy way to transition from something like this, but there's plenty going on here at the University of Iowa, so we're going to try our best to do so. 
A rough season for the Volley Hawks this past year, but the team received some positive news yesterday. With head coach Sharon Dingman announcing that former director of operations Angie Bolt has been promoted to interim assistant coach. This will be Bolt's first assistant coaching job in the NCAA, although she's coached at the club level for a number of years. She'll join her husband, Ben Bolt, who is also an assistant coach on the Iowa staff. Unfortunately for head football coach Kirk Ferentz, the 14-year vet will be dealing with yet another coaching breakup on this Valentine's Day. After the program confirmed wide receivers coach Eric Campbell and assistant tight ends coach David Rye would be leaving the program earlier this year. Two more coaches are now headed out the door as well. The athletic department confirmed Wednesday that secondary coach Darrell Wilson will be trading in black and gold for scarlet and gray, bolting Iowa City for Piscataway and Rutgers University. And despite losing several key assistants this offseason, Ferentz is adamant that change is simply part of the college game and that the departures had no effect on recruiting. You know, change is part of college football, and, and that happens. It's part of football in general. And I think, again, the players looked at what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, and probably uh, saw opportunity. And I think, you know, at least the guys that uh, signed with us felt, you know, felt good about the opportunities that they, they were going to find here, both on the field, but also uh, academically and, and just, uh, just in general. And losing the 11-year assistant is not the only thing Ferentz will need to address. Running backs coach Lester Erb is also planning on joining the mass exodus of assistant coaches. Ferentz did start the rebuilding process today, however, hiring Bobby Kennedy and Jim Reed to his staff effective immediately. And tough break for the football program, but let's transition from a few sports in the offseason to, well, a number of sports, most certainly in season. For our weekend black and gold calendar, we throw it over to Alicia Denyeth, who is standing by in the newsroom. Alicia? That's right. A lot going on for ha Hawkeye Athletics this weekend. Starting it off Friday, the men and women's track teams will host the Iowa Invite starting at 4 p.m. right here in Iowa City. Then starting Friday night, the baseball team will have a three-game series lasting through the whole weekend versus Austin P. Then the softball team will have five games of their own, but against various competition around the country in Texas. Then Saturday is as busy as ever, starting with wrestling, 7 p.m., Carver Hawkeye Arena versus Edinburgh. You're not going to want to miss that. Then the men's golf team will be in Arizona for the Big Four Championships. The women's tennis team will have a doubleheader starting at 11 a.m. versus Drake, and then another one versus Western Illinois. Then finally finishing it up, the gymnastics, men and women's, will be in Champaign versus Illinois at 4 p.m. That's all for your black and gold calendar. Back to you in the studio. Thanks for that, Alicia. And one quick note before we finish up the program tonight. A congratulations is in order to women's basketball senior Jamie Printy, who was named one of the 10 finalists for the Senior Class Award honoring students for their performances both on and off the playing fields. And while that's all for us in the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio, be sure to tune in this Sunday for Courtside with both Hoops team in action all weekend long. Guys, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Lauren. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into Friday's edition of the Daily Iowan. Find out how many UI students were chosen to participate in Teach for America this year. Also read about the latest in a quest for a Johnson County Justice Center. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Check us out anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.